What's up, YouTube? This is Kerry from Side Tripping with Kerry, and I am at the White Tank Cemetery here in uh, Goodyear slash Litchfield Park, Arizona, which is, uh, these are western suburbs of Phoenix, Arizona. White Tank Cemetery is the indigent cemetery for uh, people that uh, pass away here in uh, Maricopa County, of which Phoenix is a part. And we're here to profile an Arizona State University legend and a weightlifting legend by the name of John Cole. The fact that he's here at this indigent cemetery, really, in, I can't say it any other way. It, it, it's really sad. It's sad from the perspective that this man was in the Arizona State University Hall of Fame. We're going to go out to ASU. I'm going to show you his uh his plaque that he has prominently displayed at the ASU Sports Hall of Fame, which is located in Desert Financial Arena, which is the basketball arena. And um, it's just a shame he's here. Not only that, this man was ahead of his time. At one point, he was the strongest man in the world uh, in the 70s. Uh, and let's go uh, take a look, and we'll take a look around uh, White Tank Cemetery while we're at it as well. I'm gonna be completely honest with you folks. I'm not gonna go into the details, the nuts and bolts of his weightlifting career uh, because I know I'll get something wrong with the weights. And uh, let me tell you that community, hey man, they're real, they're real hardcore about it. You know, this stuff is very important to them. But uh, John Cole was a legend to, to that community. I mean, he was something else. Um, I know he did powerlifting, which is composed of three separate weightlifting uh, techniques, if you will. Um, one is a bench press, which you're laying flat on a bench and pushing the weight off your chest. The other one is a deadlift, where you're picking the you know the bar of weights, and you're you're grabbing it and you're picking it up and standing straight up with the weights kind of at your hip. And then the other one is a squat where you have the weights usually in, in what they call a rack. You put the weights kind of on your shoulder and you bend down till your butt's like perpendicular with the floor or parallel, I should say, your, your thighs are. And then you stand back up. We are here at White Tanks. And uh, again, this is the Indigent Cemetery. I just want you guys to take a look around and uh, yes it is as desolate as it seems um, if you're a regular viewer of my channel you may recall the video I did on Cementerio Linda the beautiful cemetery that was Maricopa County's indigent burial ground from, I want to say, the turn of last century. So, you know, like around the 1870s, 1890s, up until 1952. From 1952 to 1994, the Indigent Cemetery uh, was at this place called Twin Butte Cemetery, which is out in Tempe, which is actually uh, Tempe, Arizona. is the eastern suburb of Phoenix and the home of Arizona State University. We're gonna go out there, probably my next video. Uh, but here we are at White Tanks. And since 1994, this has been the indigent burial ground uh, for people that essentially, actually it's not essentially, it, I looked it up. If you or your family, if you, if you pass away and you don't have $700, 
or if they contact your next of kin and they don't have $700, you can apply to be buried out here. And the way it works out about, I'd say if there are a thousand applications, the county buries maybe 300, I wanna say. I mean, it's like 30%. So 70%, I don't know what happens. Either people, um, you know, find other methods or if you go on the website, to me, it's, I don't know. You can feel about it how you want, but the, the, the county has these like kind of for-profit uh, body donation places, which, you know, I think it's one thing if you donate your body to science and it goes to like a university or somewhere that's gonna treat you with dignity. I don't know about for-profit. Anything for-profit, you don't matter. The shareholders do. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I think it's a little unseemly. I wish the county would do more, but hey, maybe they're doing all that they can. In any event, this is where John Cole, he's here in uh, lot nine. And I actually called out here and he's in row 10, lot nine, row 10, plot 11. So we can count over from the rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I'm going to show you guys an example what they have out here are these brass discs. They're about, let's see if I can zoom in. It's just a, a shame that someone uh, of John Cole's fame uh, is number one buried out here in a pauper's grave in basically Maricopa County's Potter's Field. Uh, and, you know, this guy was a legend in the weightlifting community. He was an ASU sports legend, yet here he is in an unmarked grave. I mean, I'm just going to say it. it, it's it's really, it's just a damn shame. And you can see, I'm going to pan around a little bit. You can see he's not the only one. There are spaces where there should be these discs, and they're not there. For example, okay, here's a row, and here's supposed to be a row. And they're just not there. They're, they're a bunch missing, I should say. So as I was walking through, I noticed there were a few just like kind of laying on the ground. And I wondered where they pushed all the way in. Because as you see, some of them are up on like pedestals. Or little, yeah, like little uh, steel. Uh, they, they, they have grooves on them. So it's like these metal... Um, spikes, if you will, that are kind of screwed in the ground. Uh, some of them look better than others. Some of them are real rusted. And I don't know whether they've fallen off or, uh, you know, or they just, I don't know, rusted off. Or somebody, pe maybe people come out here and kick them. I don't know. But uh, I actually found a couple that were on the ground. And, you know not attached anything you know a couple of them i thought might be all the way pushed down in the ground but some of them weren't they just you know when i nudged them they just slid i'm like holy crap so god only knows where that person might be buried. as you i figured out as you walk these the rows you can see the dates and the dates of burial and they're laid out in kind of a grid and it's fairly fairly kind of accurate
Um, as you can see, <laughs> there's plenty of room for growth. I would imagine this cemetery won't be full for at least another decade at the rate that they're going. Uh, these spaces over here that we're walking through and where John Cole was buried are full body. And I'm gonna post a link up to a woman's that had a blog. Her mother was buried out here. And I remember reading her blog and I was under the impression that the woman lived here in Arizona. She actually lived in Ohio and her mother, I think, had substance abuse issues or basically abandoned the family. And, she all, and the daughter grew up without her and she always wondered about her mom. And she eventually found her, that she was buried here in white tanks. And she, through determination, uh, got her out of here. She, um, you know, did, did what she had to do paperwork wise. Oh boy. I guess this was some type of sinkhole or something. There's a marker. I think it's tipped over. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, but she got her mom, her mom's remains removed from white tanks and taken back to Ohio. What's interesting are the the, the connection with John Cole is that John Cole's last wife uh, wrote like a blog post about John. And, and it's just sad. I mean, John really was a guy that was ahead of his time. You know, I think had he been living now uh, with the weight training, with the personal training, you know, rather than the 70s and early 80s when when he was uh, in business after he'd left ASU, I think he could have made a more of a go of it. You know, more people now are in shape and working out and all that stuff than they were back then. Um, I'll show you some of the ads that he did for John Cole Systems. And uh, what's also interesting is um, in the weightlifting community, there's a t there are a ton of articles about the legendary status of this guy. And some of them, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say they didn't do their homework, but I think a lot of them maybe kind of bought into the hype and then never really went back to, to check once things were written. And, you know, you see stuff like, oh, yeah, he's a millionaire. Oh, he was doing so well. And he might have been, and he might have. But I was reading newspaper, old newspaper articles about it. His company went bankrupt in the early 80s. Well, just to get a, chrono a chronology of his life, John Cole was the first strength and conditioning coach hired by a major university. He was Arizona State University's football, football program's first strength and conditioning coach. Nowadays, every single college football team, probably from NCAA Division I down to NAIA, has a strength and conditioning coach. He was one of the first. He was definitely the first at ASU. He worked with legendary coach Frank Cush, who, uh, I mean, ASU used to be dominant in the 70s before they joined the Pac-12, well, the, then the Pac-10 conference. Um, well, it was the Pac-8, and then ASU and U of A joined, and it became the Pac-10. Anyway, uh, when they were in the Western Athletic Conference, they were dominant. And, you know, Frank Cush believed in muscle development, things of that nature, and, and physical fitness, nutrition, all of which John Cole was all about, right? I mean, that was his M.O., and, uh, and so he was, he graduated from college like 68, 69, started working at ASU in 69. And then in the late seventies, Frank Cush got fired 
and a new coach took over named Daryl Rogers. Uh, John Cole got fired or let go in uh, 1980. And then that's when he really kicked into John Cole Systems, which was his personal training company. It was in Scottsdale and there's an ad for it. I'm gonna show you this ad. And the ad says for $199. And then I read somewhere else after that, it was $30 a month. He would do this personalized training thing with you where, you know, he would break it down and, um, you know, give you a nutrition plan and a weightlifting plan. And, uh, but that's a lot of money. I looked it up on the inflation calculator. $199 in 1980 is like 660 something dollars in 2021 dollars. That's a lot of money. Uh, and then I want to say in in the later 80s, uh, Joe Garagiola, who was this, he was a baseball commentator when I was growing up. Um, he lived in Paradise Valley which is kind of a ritzy suburb of Phoenix after he retired. And he used to do the games on NBC, baseball games. And, you know, he had a bunch of dough. And uh, John's company, the John Cole Systems, went belly up. And Garagiola, I guess, bought it. And it became Joe, Joe Garagiola slash John Cole Systems. And it was a gym in Scottsdale. And uh, he hired John on as a manager. So John didn't own his own company anymore, okay? Um, and then, you know, after that, he, he was once married to Linda Carter, who was Wonder Woman. He was married to her sister. And then they divorced. He married another woman in the early 90s or late 80s, early 90s. They got divorced. And then in the late, I want to say 90s, he, or actually maybe even the early 2000s, he got married again for the last time uh, to Mary. And by that time with a bankruptcy, three ex-wives, you know, things weren't looking good. He was an only child. His dad died when he was young. His mother died in the late 90s, early 2000s. So he was all alone. You know, his mother had some land in Payson, or Sholo, excuse me. Uh, and, you know, he more than likely sold that, and that was it. Then he got sick. He had some type of lung ailment. And think about it. Between a bankruptcy, three marriages, uh, businesses not going the way they want to, you know, he was at the end of his rope. Uh, his his last wife said all they had was his social security and she was like 49 at the time that he died in 2012 late 2012 and you know she didn't have any type of benefits or anything they were homeless i mean essentially she was living out of their truck while he was stuck in a uh nursing home until in a and i think maybe hospice care toward the end when he died of this lung ailment and so it was really kind of a sad end. But God dang, you would think that somebody would have helped him out. I mean, somebody. ASU, you know, the weightlifting community. I don't know. It, but they didn't. And here he is. Um, I'm walking through an area now where this is, these are really kind of the present day burials. These are all cremains. These are cremated remains that are buried. And as you can see, the ones that don't have the bricks are pretty fresh. This is an area of full body burials. And I came across this stone over here. And this is the by far the nicest one here. I'm gonna take you to another one and another two, and then we're gonna end this. It's 
So like I said, the county, there's actually a statute on the books that says essentially that if you're the next of kin, you have an obligation to pay for the final expenses of your loved one, okay? I mean, it really only seems fair. I mean, that's kind of the way it should be. Now, with that being said, a lot of people just don't have it like that. Family member dies. I mean, a funeral, a funeral I think a bare bones funeral is gonna run you, honestly, about $3,000. Maybe a little less with a cremation. Maybe, maybe 1,500, two grand. I mean, that's a lot of money if you just don't have it. And I think what might've happened uh, with the young lady back here or some of the other people who ha actually have nice markers is maybe the family didn't have it at the time, the county buried them, and the family got their money together, at least some money, and were able to buy a nice stone for, I don't know, who knows, 500 bucks, something like that. So they honor their loved one the best way they can. Um, with regard to John Cole, again, it, it, keep going back to it, but it's, it's, it's just really a shame. Um, I actually reached out to a writer uh, who is a, he's a weightlifter. He, he wrote a weightlifting article and he's a weightlifter himself. And he actually wrote an article that I'll link to. I'll try to find it and put the link to uh, down below. And I asked him if he knew whether, if he knew that John was buried in a pauper's grave here in Phoenix, and he did not. And um, what's interesting is he said that, he, you know, he just kind of broke it down to me and he told me, he goes, hey man, this ain't a unique story among the weightlifting community. And he proceeded to tell me about a buddy of his that he knew and a couple of guys, you know, this particular fellow was a, was a ex-policeman. And he was a weightlifter, but he um, uh, get, had developed a drug problem, you know, in addition to, uh, you know, substance, a really bad substance abuse problem and lost everything. And kind of the same thing happened where he wound up in a pauper's grave. Uh, again, that's not to say that that happened to John. I think John's biggest issue were issues were multiple marriages he was in business for himself sometimes despite your best efforts your business doesn't work out and businesses fail and you know he didn't have a whole lot of family support because there weren't that many family members around it's just him he and his mom for the longest time and then when his mom passed away he's by himself um you know and then at the end he got sick and uh all he had was Social Security and Medicare. And, you know, because of that, here he is. But uh, with what he did for the weightlifting community, for the person that he was at ASU, for the legendary status he was, it, 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 he does not belong here. Um, I remember when I first came out here and didn't see his marker, I thought to myself, well, maybe somebody came out here and disinterred him and he's buried somewhere else but I know that didn't happen because I called the office and they told me where his grave is or you know so he's there and as of right now it's unmarked so unfortunately folks this is it um, I hope you like this particular episode of side tripping with Carrie if you do please uh, please leave some comments and uh, please considering subscribing to the channel and I uh, will see you the next time.